Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. Quorum Guide. Sir Jacques Perru. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? Can't wait to open it, but 
I gave my word to Piaggi, so... Too bad. I'll wait until I hand it to Mother. Wow! Nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before Saturn devouring his son. Again? St. Jerome and the angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Chinese coin. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer's giving to his guests. Very jolly.
Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted, given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. A little nighttime stroke, Mr. President. There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. Coming. Dear Monsieur de Richet, Inspiration of Saint Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. Devil's Thorn, the torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on but doesn't touch. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? Elizabeth Adams. Home introduced her to us. Yes. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. 
I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room, and perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Sir, I, I don't feel well. I'm going to have to decline. I see. Well, I hope you won't be needing my help one day. I must act swiftly. I'll search my room later. I recognize this part of the corridor. I'm close. Good evening, sir. I'm sorry, but an important meeting is underway. My instructions are to let no one pass. I see. So that's where it's happening, in that room. I've just got to find a way in there. I don't recognize anything in here. This must not be the room for my vision. circles. The Massacre of the Innocents by Rubens. A bit gloomy. Guess my room is not that bad. A letter. Addressed to the French Revolutionary Court. He wants to show them his loyalty, and for that, he includes a list of guillotinable people. Women, children, precautionary beheadings? This man would kill them all. This man's ruthless. Nice decor for a revolutionary tribunal judge's room. Fine quality boots. Given the size of them, the man they belong to must be pretty big. Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Mortimer. Records of the police. 
notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris, and there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. Four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister marie Allen. This window's blocked. Huh. Let's find the other room. Sir, I understand your eagerness, but the pressure on my family complicates the task. Relax, my friend. Your relatives will soon be huh. safe. So what I saw in my vision really did happen. Well, I hope I haven't missed anything important. I thank you so much. Don't mention it. Now that's settled, let us speak about your support. Yes. You mentioned earlier some assistance from the Golden Order? Absolutely. I have concluded an agreement with their leader, Lady Sarah Faustine de Richet. Another case that Mother didn't tell me about. The funds from the Order will finance the building of a foundry in Tuscany. You will soon be able to count on a hundred or more cannons for your future campaigns. I... Uh, I was not expecting so much help from you. Uh, when can I meet this uh, de Richet? Well, unfortunately, something has cropped up. De Richet has disappeared. Disappeared? What? Here? Yes, but the staff are redoubling efforts to find her, I assure you. So the agreement, is it on or off? It is on. Her right-hand man has just arrived here to help us find her. And it is none other than her son, Louis Maurras de Richet. I wager he will ensure his mother's commitments are met. Louis. Not an easy name to live with in these times. Uh, of course. But from now on, you will deal with him. This man. It can only be Mortimer. Very well. I will seek him out. Ah! Map. a close call. When you see Louis, speak to him about the amount of our agreement. And um, how much exactly are we talking about? 20,000 Louis d'or. A sum that will enable you to easily win your next conquests. My friend, an unparalleled destiny awaits you in France. That is very flattering. However, is 20,000 Louis d'or Enough to purchase so many cannons. In this case, yes. Madame de Richet and I have negotiated a very good price. Very well. You can count on me to talk with her son. Perfect. Remember that great things can be achieved with him on your side. Of course. Anything else? Not for now. 
Try to get some rest. The next few days are likely to be tiring. Then, sir, I bid you a good evening. Good evening, my friend. It's time to leave. I can explain. Perhaps, but remain still. Still. But, but first, you could perhaps remove the blade from my throat? You have ten seconds to explain your presence here. Emily, we both know you're not going to kill anyone this evening. Be careful. I might have to cut you off. Wait! <laughs> Let's talk about this misunderstanding. What are you doing in my room? First of all, let's keep calm. My being here is just a coincidence. Anyway, I seriously doubt what I'm doing in your room is really the question that interests you. Now is it? Clever boy. So answer the question that does interest me. What were you really doing on the balcony? A young soldier arrived this evening. Someone was waiting for him in his room. I wanted to find out more, and what I heard was worth the risk. All right, go on. Do these events concern me? Do they involve the Golden Order? More and more I get the feeling that something serious has happened to my mother. So if disturbing your sleep in the middle of the night helps me find her, I have no regrets. That is the most sincere thing you have said to me since we began. All right, Louis, I might have overreacted a bit. Please do excuse me, but next time, please try knocking on my door. I'd be delighted to open it for you. Oh, well, I'll remember in that case. Good night, Emily. Good night, Louis. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Luis. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night.
exhausted. I better go to bed. Well, I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. All right, in my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I'd better search the room, who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. writing material. From what I see, no ink's ever been used on this quill. The smell reminds me of something. It smells like lemon. That's odd. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Golden Elixir. This bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. The 
paper's rougher around the writing. The paper's moist here. Very light stain, barely visible. And the smell reminds me of something. Come on, Louis, think, think. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She applied a liquid to the book. She must have used the writing materials. The quill has been used, but not with regular ink. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Inferno by Dante. Abandoned hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer's giving to his guests. Very jolly. size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? Since you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. George Washington. Let no one disturb me. I'm busy. Too bad. I'll see him later. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. For God's sakes, what happened in here? My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. 
I've been told that you're no better. And, unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please, excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day. Chess with a half circle pattern. Looks like I found a box containing some kind of white crystals. Thirty November, 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well-being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that it could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is... A novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. Just with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible.
Monsieur Johann von Wulner. out of an old encyclopedia. So Jacques Perru. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Napoleon Bonaparte. The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm. That might come in handy. Hannibal crossing the Alps, another military success. Why do I get nothing but the Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius? Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. Golden elixir. Vercingetorix throws down his arms at the feet My of Julius dear Caesar Napoleon, by Royer. As previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join. Fragment of Amber. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. My dearest son, I'm writing to him. It's a beautiful weapon, a Levy Damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, 
That's me. Might be better to take a different stairway. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your eye? I had a bad fall. Looks more like a punch to me. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes. I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're going to tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Elizabeth, confide. Hiding in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be healed as if by magic? That it will bring my smile back, or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... 
separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's coming for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now! But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone.
A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Oh, no, really. I'm not sure if I understand. Huh. Kuru looks totally out of place here. He's counting the ten sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to be here. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, Not I am either. shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Souterne, isn't it? Absolutely! If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Moras de Richet. Oh. De Richet? 
de Richet, a name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? Thank you, Jimmy Lawrence. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur von Bonner. Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> yes, I heard the news. What a storm. He's certainly well connected and in high places. <laughs> Surprising. No one appears to know him. No one knows me, and yet here I am. Quite so. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Of course. Oh, 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 oh. It is remarkable. Yes, I heard. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> The last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. 
So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. <laughs> Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. <laughs> 